Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to start a new series looking at Bitcoin wallets. We're going to examine one wallet each week and then we're going to rank them on the Bitcoin wallet leaderboard. The first wallet we're going to look at is Bitcoin Core, the reference wallet. To get Bitcoin Core for Windows, Linux or Mac, go to bitcoin.org, go to resources, Bitcoin Core and then download Bitcoin Core. From here you can choose Windows, Mac or Linux. We'll download the Windows version. You can also get Bitcoin Core for Android from the Google Play Store, but there is not a version of Bitcoin Core for Apple's based products. Once you've downloaded the installer, double click on it and click Next. Go Next and normal things, Bitcoin Core will roll away installing the client. Once done, click Next and now we can start it running. When it runs for the first time, it's going to ask you where you want to store the blockchain data. Although this version is saying 500 gigs of free space is available, you really need at least 500 gigabytes to store the full blockchain. If you want to keep the full blockchain, you probably want to choose at least a drive that's got at least a terabyte of space. Also, SSD disk helps a lot. You also have the option of running in pruned mode where you only keep the most recent transactions and that's the default option here, so it'll only keep the most recent two gigabytes. Note that it will still download the whole 500 gigabytes of the blockchain, but it'll throw away all but the last two gigs and this download might take you one to three days. So once you've installed it, you need to be very patient. The next step is where it actually commits is downloading and you can see the progress indicator currently 0.00% and you'll need to wait till this gets to 100% before you can do most things. While we're waiting for that we can minimize that window and start the process of creating a new wallet. You can name the wallet anything you would like. Uh, encrypt wallet allows you to encrypt it and when you click create the next screen will ask you to enter a password. Note if you lose that that's it your bitcoin's gone. While we're waiting for that let's have a look at some of the options. Remember how I said you could have a full copy of the blockchain or just part of it. So if you don't have prune ticked, this is going to download the entire blockchain. If you want to reuse less disk space, then you can tell it to prune it and keep a smaller amount. So you might say like 10 gigabytes or I'm using just one gigabyte. For this example, I've also enabled coin control features, but this one will be off by default. Normally Bitcoin Core reaches out to up to 10 servers to download the blockchain and it can allow up to 100 inbound pairs to connect and get data from you. These options control about allowing inbound connections. The last two options are window, so you can choose what you want to do when it's minimized or not, and the display. You can choose different units of Bitcoin to see, such as Satoshis or whole Bitcoins and some font options. Lastly, you you can edit the raw configuration file. There are two main Bitcoin networks. There's one called Mainnet, which is where you have actual Bitcoin that has value. And there's another network used called Testnet. I like using Testnet when I'm trying out new wallets. You can get free Bitcoins on this network. On Testnet, Bitcoin has no value, but it means you can try out all the wallet features without any risk to your actual Bitcoin funds. Note that the wallet you create is related to the network that you've got selected. So once you've finished using Testnet, and you delete this line from the config, you'll need to create a new wallet for the main net. Don't confuse a wallet address from testnet with a wallet address from the main net. Now let's start actually using the wallet. So we'll go across to receive and you can give it some label. I've got one already. I've called testnet BTC. Uh, you can optionally fill in an amount and you can put a message that is attached to the payment. And then you simply click create new receiving address. Once you've done that, you'll see a receiving address down here and you can click on that and there's the usual QR code you get. That is the address and you can simply say copy that address and give it to somebody. If you filled in an amount, you can give them a URI for wallets that support that to pay a specific amount to you. Next, we wanna get some Bitcoin on testnet. Remember this Bitcoin has no value. It's only for playing around with and testing. We're gonna use a supplier called coinforcet.eu. You go there, you're gonna to get to choose a faucet. We're gonna choose Bitcoin testnet. Here we put in the address we got from our wallet click get bitcoins note that testnet can be very slow it could easily take 20 30 minutes for these to turn up in your wallet note that when you get bitcoin from a testnet node it's considered good manners to return it to them when you're finished and we've got the address there so just make a note of that so you can send the money back to them when you're no longer using it on the transactions tab you'll soon see the bitcoin we've received on testnet now we've got some testnet bitcoin let's have a look at sending so we'll cross to the send tab now if you enable the coin control options you can actually select specific coins that you want to send, otherwise it'll just default to automatically selecting which ones to use. 
if you're just spending part of a transaction, then the excess has to go somewhere. And if you want, rather than sending it to your wallet, you can send it somewhere else. This coin control feature is quite an advanced function. Next, you've got to fill in who you wish to pay. There's also an address book functionality over here. We're going to create a new address book entry and we'll create one for coin faucets. And so, so kind to give us some free testnet Bitcoin. Fill in their name and the address they asked us to return the funds to. Now we can simply just say choose. You could also just put the address in there. From here, you can put in the amount of Bitcoin you want to send. So let's send a thousand sats. Now this is an important one. This controls who pays the fees. So if you tick that and you say subtract fee from the amount, that means means whoever receives it is going to get less than the thousand satoshis so they will end up paying the fee if you untick this then the fee will be added to the thousand satoshis and you will pay it I just spotted that amount went wrong let's change that back to a thousand satoshis you also have the option to send all of your Bitcoin to this destination let's say you wanted to pay more than one person at once so you have to pay one transaction fee then down the bottom you can say add recipient and you can put another person in here I'm going to use the same one but you wouldn't do that you'd choose a different person choose the units and you could say I'm going to pay that person 2,000 satoshis but in this case we're just going to use the one so I'm going to click on the cross and get rid of that payments so we're only paying one person now we come down to the fee paying options so recommended is where it calculates from the net Work, how much fee to pay so you can choose a time frame if you want it to go through in two blocks each blocks 10 minutes so that's why it's 20 minutes or seven days so seven days is quite a long time but the fee will be low you can also put in your own custom fee this last option is really interesting replace by fee so what you can do is you can start off with a low fee and hope it goes through and then if it doesn't you can bump the fee and pay more to make it happen faster so let's use that option what we do now is we click send Bitcoin core pops up an overview of our transaction and we get our final chance to cancel it once we're happy we click sign and send over on the transactions tab we can see our new transaction there and it's waiting to currently be processed by a block it's in the mempool now we know we selected a very low fee that's going to take seven days so what we can do uh, while we're to make it process faster we can go increase transaction fee and this will use the replace by fee mechanism to increase the fee to an amount that will make the transaction process faster what we're waiting to see is the transaction go from being in the mempool to having at least one confirmation. The more confirmations, the more secure you are that the payment has been made. Just a warning on testnet, it doesn't pr always process transactions like mainnet at the same speed. So you could be waiting 20 minutes, you could be waiting 30 minutes. You'll just need to be patient if you're using testnet. While we're waiting for that to go through, under window there's a bunch of information you can look at here information tells you about the node that's currently running bitcoin core runs its own node peers is everyone that you're currently talking to network traffic shows how much traffic is being used at the moment and the last one is the console now we never have a need to have a quick word about this one the console allows you to do particularly advanced commands but there's been a lot of scams in the past where scammers offer to help people and ask you to type in console commands and then they use this to steal your Bitcoin. So don't accept console commands from people trying to help you. Generally, this is a very advanced function. Back over in the transactions tab, transactions we did before is up to three confirmations. For small amounts, you, you might be happy with three confirmations. I think Bitcoin Core waits for six confirmations before it considers something's confirmed. The more confirmations, the more confident you are that it's not a false transaction or hasn't been interfered with. Let's give it a little bit longer. Through the magic of time travel, this transaction is now confirmed and it has 442 confirmations. Now let's start ranking Bitcoin Core on the ladder board. First, let's look at cross-platform support. It has a Windows client, a Linux client, a Mac client, and an Android client. Each client gives it two points, so out of 10, it scores eight. It doesn't have an Apple client. In the network support, it has, each category is worth three points and one bonus point available. Bitcoin Core is itself a node, so it can be run independently from everything else, and it supports testnet. It doesn't support Lightning. So out of this category, it scores a total of six points. In the security category, each option is worth one point. So Bitcoin to core support self-custody, and this is going to be a mandatory requirement for this series. It 
is a Bitcoin only wallet. Uh, the reason why it gets a point here is because any other crypto it supports just adds additional code and potential vulnerabilities. It is a hot wallet. Now Bitcoin Core does actually support cold wallets or hardware wallets. The reason why I'm not giving it credit here is I'm only going to rank things that come in the installation package you download rather than things that you can add to it through further downloads or scripts. It does support the concept of address rotation so you can every time you receive funds you can create a new address that is open source. CoinJoin is a privacy feature. It is possible to do CoinJoin with Bitcoin Core but it's, it's really hard and there's no really direct user interface for it so for this reason I'm actually going to score it a false. It does support multi-sig. None of the features are particularly easy to use so that's why it scores no bonus points. So a lot of the features like multi-sig or coin join require you to use the console or um, third-party systems. Next up is wallet portability. Each category is worth three points again so Bitcoin Core cannot import BIP39 or export BIP39 seed phrases. As a result if you create a wallet with Bitcoin Core you cannot just simply take it to another Bitcoin Core wallet you are locked in. You can import private keys. You can of course copy the Bitcoin Core private key to another wallet and hopefully it has support for that format and being the reference wallet and there being no other special import features, there's no bonus points. The last category is fee control with each attribute being worth two points. So it does support manual fee control and it supports guided fee control where you can say I want to make sure my transaction goes through within a day, 20 minutes, whatever. It has quite a nice imitation of place by fee to make it easier to send through a transaction faster. It has, it is technically possible to do child pays for parents but there's no GUI support and it's quite complicated. I'm going to score it a false and there's no other fee control attributes to be warrant a bonus point so it scores a total of 6 out of 10 for this category. So if we transfer all those scores across to the leaderboard and average them out, Bitcoin Core Wallet scores an average of 6 out of 10 and that will set the standard for the reference wallet. All the other wallets have to compete against that to try and perform better. I hope you found the series interesting, that's the first one. I'm going to try and review a wallet every two weeks and post a video about it and slowly rank them on the leaderboard so everyone can compare them. I'm going to leave some other videos around my head that hopefully you'll find of interest. Thanks for watching.